In my f***ing time! What's wrong with that? It looks like It's disgusting! All right, chef. What's up? Right this second. Well done in the medium to the left. Yeah, good. Absolutely beautiful. Service, please. That's nice to cook, that filet mignon. Test if the pan is hot enough. Add some oily oil. Oh yeah! <laughs> Let's prepare to cook the beef now sous vide style. If you don't want to do sous vide, you can always do it the old way by putting it in the oven or pan frying it for longer. I usually set my temperature to 54 Celsius for medium rare. Dunk in your beef when it reaches desired temperature and let it sit in the water bath for about 90 minutes. The reason I cook sous vide is so that I don't have to worry about undercooked beef or overcooked and dry beef. Peel the garlic with your cat-like claws x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Go ahead and murder this baby onion. We're preparing a duck cell right now. I'm doing a simple version with just garlic, shallots, and mushrooms. It makes a very good filling along with the beef in our spring roll today. I'm gonna just use one clove of garlic and one shallot because this is experimental and I don't want to cook too much. This will make about two large spring rolls. Wash your mushrooms. You never know who touched your mushrooms before. Now slice and dice your mushrooms. You'll want to get it nice and fine. And this is why you keep your knives sharp. It makes it much more fun and much faster to do. Throw everything into a saucepan. Now put it on a low medium heat. You don't want to add any oil right here because there's a lot of moistures in mushroom. You really want to heat it slowly to get all the moisture out. Can you see it bubbling right now? So now you can increase the temperature to really boil off and evaporate all that liquid. Give it a stir to help it evaporate and reduce. When almost all the moisture has evaporated, you can add a little bit of oil, not too much. This is optional, but you can put in a few drops of liquid smoke. I like the smoky flavor. A few dashes of Worcester, wor, 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 Worcester sauce and a few drops of soy sauce. I'm just going to say Worcestershire next time. That's how it's spelt. Give it a little bit of a stir and we'll set it aside. Buy spring roll pastry from an Asian supermarket, because nobody knows how to make this. Only Asian wizards know. Who know what it's made of even? Panda scrotum? Well, be careful when you try to peel off a sheet. You don't want to rip the panda scrotum. Lay on a few slices of prosciutto, just like real beef wellington. Now take the duck cell we made from before, and lay it over the prosciutto. Remember the hunk of tenderloin that we sous vide it before? Let's slice it open. Just look at that. Perfect doneness. Edge to edge pink. Slice it into more manageable pieces that is more rollable in a spring roll. Make sure you have some of the crust on it for the smoky flavor. Now wrap it up. Now wait a minute. I'm making a spring roll. The rolling technique for a spring roll is different from a beef tenderloin, and yet I'm rolling it the beef tenderloin way. Ah, maybe there's some way I can fix this. Maybe if I slice this in half first, I could tuck everything in. Here goes nothing. Okay, I think this is where I lose my professional Chinese license. So I managed to sort of roll them 
by forcing it in the end, and I fried them up. What went wrong? Well, number one, I forgot to add mustard to the beef. In the traditional beef Wellington recipe, you need mustard. Secondly, it was salty as heck. The prosciutto normally works in the traditional beef Wellington recipe because the puff pastry is nice and thick, and the longer cooking process absorbs all the salty flavors. However, because I'm only flash frying it since all my ingredients inside are cooked, none of the salty flavors were absorbed from the prosciutto. So you had an entire slice in one of the spring rolls, and it was just so salty. So this is how you wrap a spring roll for real. Don't forget the mustard. Just put a little bit of the duck cell on the bottom, near the bottom. Wrap it up like this. Fold it up halfway. And then bring the sides together like this. Now it looks like an envelope for a letter. Keep rolling it up. Sprinkle some water at the top to make it sticky and keep rolling. And there you have it. A perfectly packaged spring roll. No pandas died in vain this time. Make sure your oil is hot enough and then drop in your spring roll. We want to get the oil at a very high temperature since all the ingredients inside are already cooked. So we're just flash frying the surface. I prefer shallow frying to deep frying here since I only need to get the surface. Also, I waste a lot less oil and it's way easier to clean up. So flip it around until all sides are evenly browned. Nice. Let's slice open this bad boy now. Well, there you have it. I hope Gordon Ramsay will be proud of this. Beef Wellington spring rolls instead of the puff pastries. Now look at how beautiful it is inside. The beef is perfectly cooked to medium rare. And the mushrooms, they add such a complicated, smoky, and fragrant flavor. I just love the intermingling of the crispy texture on the outside and the soft, tender center. The tenderloin really is the perfect beef for making this recipe. I dipped my spring roll in Worcestershire sauce. It didn't really work. It works with prawn spring rolls more. I dipped it into honey mustard afterwards and oh, it was perfect. So quick recap. You sous vide to ensure a perfectly cooked inside. Flash fry the outside for a gradient of textures. Don't add prosciutto, it's way too salty. And use Dijon mustard or honey mustard to balance out the flavors. This doggy wants you to subscribe, hit like, and leave a comment. Let me know if there's a crazy idea you want me to cook.